On this day in history, August 12, 2000, something happened that no one in the whole of Russia ever imagined possible. It was the sinking of the Kirk submarine. Now, this submarine was as big as two fighter jets and it was described as unsinkable. So you can imagine the shock all around the world when this disaster happened and this submarine sunk to the bottom of the Barents Sea on August 12, 2000. Now, all 118 crew members were later found dead. The cause of this disaster remains unknown. Now, talking about the size of this um, submarine, it was, I mentioned that it was supposed to be unsinkable. They said it was even going to resist a direct heat from a torpedo. They said it, it had a reputation for being a war machine, size of two jumbo jets, pride of the Russian Navy. You know, just lots of rep that this you know, submarine had. But sadly, you know, it, it, you know, the sinking of the submarine dealt a very big blow to uh, the military pride, the reputation of the just elected uh, president at that time. Um, it had two nuclear reactors. It could reach speed of 28 knots. It was the largest attack submarine in the world, approximately the size of, you know, three times the size of the largest subs in the United States Navy. It's unfortunate that the fate of the 118 Russian soldiers on board was unknown. Uh, several nations offered to help, but Russia refused their help for about two days. They even refused to announce the sinking of the submarine for about two days because it seemed almost unbelievable. So they released movies about this in 2018, and, uh, but people really blame this on government negligence. Um, you know, many years later, people be, you know, continue to write articles, do investigations into what exactly caused the sinking of the Kirk submarine. I'm actually it's really shocking. You know, and the most shocking part really is the part where it says the Russian government refused to help. Um, makes no sense. You know, maybe because they chose to not ad admit that they one of their best military projects has um, had failed. The or, biggest in the world yeah, at the time. Or there was, oh. you know, there may, or there is something else. You know that we, you know the world is not aware concerning the explosion that you know led to the sinking of the submarine. But it makes absolutely no but sense. But when I think about this, it, you know, it takes me back to the story of the Titanic. I mean, Titanic was really big, you know. Yeah. And there were talks about it being the most unsinkable and, you know, talks that even God could not sink the ship. It sank. Yeah, it but hit an I'm, iceberg and, oh, you know, the story went down from there. And still with this one, it was said to be an unsinkable submarine. And Yeah, but I mean, uh, th this one, now we're talking about an, an explosion. You know, this didn't hit, hit an iceberg or, you know, or melt. No, it's about the know, fact that a statement was made about them that they were unsinkable. That's yeah. the point. But y you can be unsinkable you know, to some extent. I don't think there's anything that is completely, you know, fail-proof. Um, whoever it is that made the submarine would know how it can be sunk, you know. If an explosion of that magnitude should be able to sink whatever submarine. But anyway, um, I do, it just feels bad, you know, how... And it's one of the reasons why, you know, I have a huge fear of water because it's one of the worst ways to, to lose your life, um, especially to be in a submarine, you know, thousands of feet underwater, and, you know, there's zero help. You Over 70% of the woman body is made up of water. Why are you afraid of water? Because I can't swim that, can't that well. Anyway, on this day in 1964, the world lost uh, one of the, well, I guess the founder of what we today know as the James Bond franchise. You know, Ian Fleming, who was the author of uh, James Bond uh, uh, books back then in the uh, 50s. Um, and the early 60s. He died of a heart attack on this day in 1964. He was born on the 28th of May in 1908 and uh, passed on on this day. Um, he, of course, uh, was a uh, British actor and journalist, um, the creator of the James Bond, the world's most famous fictional spy. Um, his series of novels about the agent 007 based in part in the, dash in, in the author's real life experiences um, of course, uh, you know, like I mentioned, spawned one of the most lucrative movie franchises uh, for today. He was, you know, according to reports, a heavy smoker and drinker, and um, you know, eventually passed on from uh, heart disease. Uh, his last recorded words were an apology to the ambulance drivers for having inconvenienced them. He wrote twelve novels and two short collections about Agent 007, which together sold more than eighteen million copies. Um, so yeah, um, he wrote uh, The Man with the Golden Gun, Casino Royale, Dr. No, uh, and a couple of others uh, that uh, were, oh, yeah, Chili Chili Bang Bang also was written by Ian Fleming. There's many of them actually, 12 of them of the James Bond um, 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 books. 
Uh, some of them have been converted to movies, others not. Um, so perfect time to ask, you know, who's your favorite James Bond character? So the thing about me in movies is I love movies. I am a <clears> big <throat> movie fan. But don't ask me about the actors. I don't even remember <laughs> <laughs> the name of the actor, but I, I do love movies. Yeah, so I think mine would be, you know, that would be P.S. Brosnan. Uh, Daniel Craig, which he, who, who eventually took over, never just really, really, never, you know, gave, you know, the James Bond feel as much as Pierce Brosnan did. People would also say Sean Connery, but I didn't get to watch James Bond in Sean Connery's era. He was, I think, I think it was the first James Bond. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was from James Bond from the 60s, yes. I didn't get to watch um, um, any James Bond movies from that era, you know, mm -hmm. but in my era, it was uh, uh, Pierce Brosnan, who was, for era. me, the yes, most stylish know. and the most fascinating <laughs> James Bond. So we know that um, um, the that latest okay. James Bond movie, No Time to Die, was supposed to be released last year, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, it was supposed to premiere in some um, countries in Asia, but that was constantly postponed. But now I think they fixed the release date for October the 8th, 2021, for No Time to Die to be released yeah. you know, in cinemas worldwide. Um, can't wait to watch that. Interesting. Well, all right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're talking um, Royal Dutch Shell now. And the 45.9 billion naira compensation that has been, um, they have agreed to pay according to a court ruling. Uh, what are the details that we may need to know about this? How do the Ogoni people really feel about this? And how beneficial will this be um, with uh, the Ogoni people? We'll get into that discussion next. We're going to be speaking with Celestine Akbobari. He's an Ogoni land environmental activist. Coming up next here on The Breakfast. <laughs> 